Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, you know, all praise is the most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, as we see the Most High unleashing judgment worldwide, we're looking at the tempest storms that the Most High has unleashed through Louisiana and the East Coast. The once-in-a-lifetime storms in New York and other places surrounding the area, New Jersey, Connecticut, all these different places, you're starting to see all of these things picking up. You're starting to see how the devil and his whole narrative is just falling apart. They're still trying to act as if, they're trying to ignore all the things that are happening to make it seem as if things are normal or going to or return to normal. But you're going to see that everyone that has made a deal with the devil is going to have to pay. Anyone who's taken the bag with Satan is going to have to pay. The ones who have not, you know, had their eyes opened at this point, it's not looking too good. Most high is still calling in the last remnant. But as you can see, how difficult it is for people to uh, be turned to the truth. If, if you're not called, it's impossible. But we're going to show, we're going to get into some more information just to show you how important and how important and, and instrumental this church, this abominable church has been. How they've had their hands in everything. The abominable church, you know, has had their tentacles and everything. All the different nations have had to go to get permission to do certain things, to do things they do from the abominable church. See, Satan has not been given the opportunity to repent. Satan does not have the opportunity to come back or repent. Just like the angels, when, when they went off and the fallen angels went off and came down here and corrupted men, and then they asked Enoch to go and, you know, intercede for them, and the Most High did not give them that opportunity. Same thing today. Satan and his demons do not have the opportunity to repent. So, what they do is they set up a society that does not allow the chosen to be able to repent either. See, in the spirit world, this is already known. This has already been decreed that Satan, the fallen angels, the demons, they don't have an opportunity to repent. So that plays itself out here in the celestial world where the ones that are controlled by these, these uh, fallen angels and demons set up a society and set up a religion that makes it so the people that follow them cannot repent and go back to the Most High either. It's a very clever and sinister game that is being played. They hide books. They hide information. They switch up history. They hide identities. They hide land masses. They, ha they hide who the land masses were intended for. They hide everything. And then as you try to go and find the truth, you're labeled as being 
crazy nut job conspiracy theorist because they're the ones that have elevated themselves into these positions of authority and with those positions they have the uh they have the opportunity they have the bully pulpit to be able to tell you who's true and who's not <clears throat> who's crazy and who are the sane ones until the most high awakened his people until he gave us the fullness of the gospel until he gave us the first and second stick once he gave that that separated us to not need the approval of the gentiles see even when we were into the truth we were still beholden to catholic doctrine just like i said people still hold beholden to the bible only well, the only people who established that was the Catholics. That's why I say we have a lot of Catholic Hebrews. Because the Most High never ordained 80 books. The Most High never ordained 66 books only. That is a Catholic Christian devil doctrine. And if you're limiting yourself to only those books, then you're limiting yourself to the doctrine of the devil. Let's get into this, right? We're getting into the Nag Hammadi, page 142. Go ahead and skip down to 38. Jesus said, often you have desired to hear these sayings that I am speaking to you, and you have no one else from whom to hear them. See, we only can hear the truth. You're only going to get the truth from the Most High, the Holy Spirit, and his Son. They're the only ones that have truth in them. Everyone else here, unless you're awakened by the Most High or you're His, do, does not. they don't have truth in them. So that's why I'm saying right here. And you have no one else from whom to hear them. So it's not again. Jesus said, often you have desired to hear these sayings that I am speaking to you, and you have no one else from whom to hear them. There will be days when you will seek me, and you will not find me. The last four to five hundred years, it's been silence. The books were closed. The path to truth was blocked. So again, there will be days when you will seek me and you will not find me because these churches were set up to keep us away from Yahweh Shai, away from the Holy Spirit, away from the Most High. They gave us imitations, their imitations. They gave us white Jesus. They gave us the male Holy Spirit. They gave us Hey, you know, be a, be a good, a good, a good member of the society here. That's all that you're supposed to do. Be a good, don't, don't really think about heaven. Think, think about being a good, you know, a good member of this society right here. Don't read, don't study, don't go chase after the most high. We'll tell you what to do. We'll tell you what to think. Now, this is a very important part right here. Jesus said, the Pharisees and the scholars have taken the keys of knowledge and have hidden them. They have not entered, nor have they allowed those who want to enter to do so. As for you, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Read that one more time. The Pharisees and the scholars have taken the keys of knowledge and have, have hidden them. They have not entered, nor have they allowed those who want to enter to do so. Those Pharisees and scholars. Who are the ones that have taken the books? Who are the ones that have 50 plus miles of hidden information underneath their churches? Who cannot get into the Vatican archives? 
who's taken the keys of knowledge and hidden them. These Pharisees and so-called scholars have never went away. They've been here the whole time. They're here today, still being the a barrier or obstacle to knowledge, setting up others to be barriers and obstacles to knowledge as well. I was checking out UB uh, TV, his video on the boule. Great video. And when you look at it, you start to see the same things. They set up people that look like us in order to trip us up, in order to get us looking at Africa as the homeland, in order to support their narrative that we all came here on slave ships and that we should all go back to Africa. See, they'll set up certain people that look like us, set them up in positions of power as long as it feeds into their narrative. So now you got pastors and priests who talk about how, you know, only read these books. We'll tell you, you know, actually don't even read the Old Testament anymore. Don't read the Apocrypha. We don't accept that anymore. They've taken the keys of knowledge and hidden them. Why? Because they have not entered and they will put up obstacles and roadblocks so that you can't either. You see why it is. it was so important for us to get the first and second sticks. Because that created the separation for us to be able to finally think on our own. To finally not give credence to the ones who have taken and hidden the keys of knowledge. Not hold them up on a pedestal and think that we have to prove things to them. Not think that we need to go make videos or try to get you know a, a debate with them. Who cares what they think? They've done nothing but hide knowledge, hide information. And they still do it today. You don't hear them talking about who are the real Israelites. You don't hear them talking about how, you know, they'll say things like, you know, Israel is like God's time, please. But which Israel are we talking about? They're not talking about 1619, 2019 and the switch. They're not talking about how everything is going downhill. We're not talking about how, as we began the 8K, started to pray at the 10th hour, how things have just ramped up even more. How the Most High is fulfilling his covenant with our people. They're not talking about any of that. Why is that? Because they have been doing nothing but hiding information this whole time. What makes you think they'll do anything different? They're going to continue to try to ignore this truth. Try to find some people who look like us, even to today, and have them, A, you know, just pretty much just say the same thing we've been saying. We'll just come, have it come out of your mouth. So we say, hey, look, I'm not racist. Look, I got a black friend. Look, my, my best friend's black. Look, he's right here. He's saying the same things I've been saying. So I'm not racist. It doesn't matter what color you are, as long as you're saying the same thing I'm saying. But if you're one of those black guys who's saying the total opposite, and actually use the scriptures to, uh, to substantiate what you're talking about and history and other, and other, uh, other works that are actually proving what we're saying. Don't listen to those guys. Those guys are crazy. Those guys are all racist. Even though this whole society has been nothing but racist against us, somehow we're the racist. Isn't it kind of racist to actually just try to dismiss everything that we say without even looking and to see if what we're saying actually has some validity to it? But just dismissing what we're saying out of hand without even, you know, uh, examining the information. Isn't that kind of racist? So again, the Pharisees and the scholars have taken the keys of knowledge and have hidden them. They have not entered, nor have they allowed those who want to enter to do so. Is that not describe the churches to the T? Does that not describe the people who follow these churches, who are in these churches, to the T? See, they hold us up, they hold the Hebrew Israelites up to these ridiculously high standards that they refuse to hold their own pastors and priests to. They want us to prove everything, get, show us the scriptures, do this, do that. I'm not doing any of that. Tell your priest to do that. Tell your pastor to do that. 
Tell him to go back for the last few or 500 years of history and show how that did not fulfill scripture. Prove to, uh, to have him prove that to you how the worst genocide of a people over the last 500 plus years was not somehow a fulfillment of prophecy. The hundreds of millions, if not billions of people that have been killed how is that not prophecy? How is that not the fulfillment of prophecy? Have them prove how that was not a fulfillment of prophecy. Because we're going to prove that that actually was a fulfillment of prophecy. And we show it. We've shown it many times. And we're going to show it again tonight. This here. is from the Lost Scriptures book. Those who are ignorant, unlearned, foolish, and uneducated mock and ridicule us, wishing to vaunt themselves in their own thoughts. Is that not what we get? I get, I mean, I've been getting some of these um, comments on the comment board, and it's absolutely hilarious because I'm like, hold on, you guys are just coming here with nothing but opinions, talking about Africa, you know, we all come from Africa. Africa has the most of this and the most of that. And, you know, or, you you know, you might be wrong, Big Judah. You might be leading people to hell. I'm like, uh, I'm not leading people to anywhere. I'm giving information. People see that's the difference between churches and the Hebrew Israelites. We encourage you to study. I do not encourage you to believe everything I put out. And the people who are actually on this channel read and study for themselves. If you're nothing but a follower who doesn't read or study for yourself, you don't need to be here. You need to be in the churches. You don't need to be here because the people here are called by the Most High. They study to show themselves approved. They are enlightened by the Holy Spirit. They are not just simple yes men and yes women. They, we all share a common theme. We all knew that something was wrong. We all knew that something wasn't right. We've all been searching for the truth, wherever the truth may lead us. We became as children. We were willing to learn everything anew. Unlike the people at the churches, who if pastor says this, then I'm going to do that no matter what. Even if it doesn't make any sense, if pastor tells me to jump off a freaking cliff, I'm going to do it. And then I'll just say, oh, Jesus, Jesus will... Jesus wanted me to do that. If the priest says, do this, I'm not going to question. I'm just going to do what he says. See, if you think like that, you don't need to be here. This is not for you. If you're still stuck on Africa, 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 you don't need to be here. You need to go somewhere else. If you can't look at all of the evidence that we were already here. And see, what they're trying to do is, even when we bring out new information, then they try to switch up with, oh, no, yeah, there might be black people here, but they were Hamites. Y'all want to say they were Hamites before, but as soon as we talk about us being the Israelites being here, all of a sudden, y'all got to try to change the narrative like usual. But that's okay, because the Most High has already exposed you. You're nothing but a bunch of liars. The truth's not in you. So pretty much anything you say, we should pretty much believe the opposite. If you say we all came from Africa, then we know that's not the truth. If you set up all these Boule members to push, uh, we need to go back to Africa. We need to get, get with our African roots. We all know then that that's what they're trying to push because they're trying to make it seem like no one was here, that we were not here. But we already know that we were because the second stick, that proves that we were already here. And those prophecies were already uh, told to our people before you Gentiles got here. They were already expecting you. They already knew that you were coming. You didn't know you were coming. You might you knew you know you were going to eventually get your opportunity because the scripture said so. But our people knew that you were coming as well. So again, those who are ignorant, unlearned, foolish, and uneducated mock and ridicule us, wishing to vaunt themselves in their own thoughts. And see, they come in to my um I've just been starting to just uh erase their comments and block them because I don't have time for idiots. 
I don't have time. I'm not wasting my time on idiots. I've said it. We've been doing this for long enough. If you don't agree, don't come. Bye. We don't need you here. I am not trying to get more uh, subscribers. I'm not like, hey, you know, hit the like button. Hey, subscribe. You know, make sure you hit the you know subscribe button. I don't do that because I'm not. I'm not looking for that. That's not what I'm here for. I've never been about that. You know, you'll never hear me say that. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit the bell. Make sure, that's not me. That's not what I'm here for. And I'm not saying anything about other people that, that do that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying for myself, that's not why I'm here. Okay? I'm here to do the work that the Most High wants me to do. I'm here to put out the information the Most High tells me to put out. If people agree with it, great. If they don't, great. What I have noticed, though, is a lot of people come back later on and say, you know what, Big Judah, I apologize. Because when I first heard this information, you know, I couldn't believe what you were saying. I thought you were going off and I unsubscribed and I left your channel. But then the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and told me to go back and to, to listen and to study and to read for myself. And I realized, you know what? You were right. And I apologize. That's that's all the most high. And that's all part of our deprogramming. Because we're all being deprogrammed because we, we've been taught so many lies that when you hear something new, you know, it, it just it overwhelms the system. And I understand when you hear like a lot of these people who come in and try to, you know, write a, a whole thesis for, you know, to try to prove me wrong, whatever. So I'm like, you know, you know what would probably work better for you, bro, is you just went to your own channel and made some videos and taught yourself instead of trying to come over here. And write a thesis over or whatever it is that you want to say or whatever point you want to make. Because ain't nobody going to sit here and read all of that. But that's okay because, like I said, the devil's going to try to sit there and, and get people to come back to him as well. Sometimes you, get, you need to see both sides to see how idiotic some of the points they make is. Okay? So, like I said, those who are ignorant, unlearned, foolish, and uneducated mock and ridicule us wishing to vaunt themselves in their own thoughts. And that's exactly it. No proof, just a whole lot of opinions, a whole lot of their thoughts. This is a big one right here. There was a couple things here. Let's take a look at about how, how we get infected and we get messed up by being, we get contaminated with the things that are around us, the people that are around us. And it understands why the Most High wanted us to be holy and separate. But what does Catholic mean? Universal. Everyone coming all together. That's what they've been pushing this whole time. And you're going to see why. Why they always want to be around us. Why as we try to pull away, they try to pull us all back together. This is why. This is like wheat mixed with chaff. For if chaff is mixed with wheat... It is not the chaff that is contaminated, but the wheat. Since they are mixed together, no one will buy the contaminated wheat. They will coax the dealer and say, give us the chaff, give us this chaff, for they see the wheat mixed with it. Then they will take the chaff and throw it out with the rest of the chaff. And that chaff will become mixed with all other material stuff. Pure seed is kept in storehouses that are secure. That's, this is why, because they want to keep us contaminated. There was the whole thing with the wheat and the tares. So here they just call it chaff. The tares and the chaff is what contaminates us. Them being around us contaminates us. It vexes our spirits. They expose us to all the things that we don't need to be exposed to. It's not in our DNA. It's not in our spirit to want to do all these things, but we're so corrupted with all the things that are around us. Now you understand why the Most High said he's going to sweep them off the land. The, there's nothing wrong with the land. There's nothing wrong with the wheat as long as the chaff is not present. And that's how the Most High talked about. That's how he said he's going to do. Uh, he was going to make things right by getting rid of the ones who's producing the bad fruit. As he grows us and we begin to make the, you know, produce the good fruits, he's going to get rid of the ones producing the bad fruit. 
the chaff because the chaff is what contaminates us, vexes our spirits. Now, this is what's happening right now also. The Father establishes a contest in the world. Before anything was, the Father alone existed. Before the worlds in the heavens appeared, or the world on earth, or principalities or authorities or powers appeared, and they produced others. Nothing came to be without the Father's will. This is the authoritative discourse in the Nag Hammadi, page 385. The Father wished to reveal his wealth and his glory. And so he established a great contest in this world. And this is what we are all in. We are in a great contest right now. He wanted to make the contestants come up and leave behind what is of the created world and despise these things with exalted, incomp incomprehensible knowledge and run to the one who is. Is that not what's happening right now? Are we not running to the one who is? Do we not have that incomprehensible knowledge now? The fullness of the gospel? So again, he wanted to make the contestants come up and leave behind what is of the created world and despise these things with exalted, incomprehensible knowledge and run to the one who is. We are to be triumphant over the ignorance of those who contend with us, the adversaries who contend against us through our knowledge. For we already have known the inscrutable uh, one from whom we have come. We have nothing in this world or else the world's authority that came to be might hold us back in the worlds of the heavens where death is universal, surrounded by individuals. Does that not make so much sense? That we are to be triumphant over ignorance of those who contend with us. All these ones that are around us are ignorant and we are to be triumphant over them. And that's why the Most High gave us back our knowledge, gave us back the fullness of the gospel so that we could be triumphant over ignorance. So like I said before, if you're one of the ones who doesn't read, doesn't study, doesn't accept other books, who pretty much is just down with the Catholic doctrine, we don't need you here. This is not for you. Have fun being ignorant. Enjoy the last days of ignorance, of being blissful ignorance. We do not want you here. We do not need you here. Unsubscribe. Goodbye. We're not wasting time with people like that. Okay, because this is not for you. So we are to be triumphant over the ignorance of those who contend with us, the adversaries who contend against us through our knowledge. How are we supposed to be triumphant? Through our knowledge. If you don't have any knowledge, then you cannot be triumphant. If you're stuck in the same place you were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this is not for you. Because you're only going to be triumphant over ignorance through the knowledge that the Most High gives you. It sends through the Holy Spirit. She's breathing through the all. That's why we're all on the same accord. That's why when I say certain things, it will click with you. It will click with your spirit. I will hear certain things from other brethren and it clicks with my spirit. I don't have to really fight with it because it makes sense. Or the Most High would have already been telling that to me and someone in this truth will say something and it will just resonate. I know that happens to all of us. And so I said, the adversaries who contend against us through our knowledge, for we already have known the inscrutable one from whom we have come. We already knew the Most High. That's why we always felt like something was wrong. Because we already knew the Father. He's already put that in our heart. That's why this is not a this is not like a church where you get to decide you want to accept Jesus and have him come into your heart like they, like the churches be doing. This is not like that. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, the Holy Spirit has always been with us. They've always been with us, guiding our steps, guiding our way back to the Father. 
and says, we have nothing in this world or else the world's authority that came uh, to be might hold us back in the worlds of heaven. That's the thing. We have not been connected to this world. We have been kept separate because the most I already knew I'm going to be calling my sons and daughters back at the end. So keep them separated. That's why things never went right for us. That's why things were always a mess for us because the most I was keeping us separated. Okay, let's read that next part. We withdraw from the world. The powers of the world who oppose us. We now have been put to shame in the world, but we are not interested in them when they speak ill of us. We ignore them when they curse us. We stare at them in silence when they treat us shamefully directly to our face. Is that not the world right now? Oh, you Hebrew Israelites. You guys don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. You guys are just making stuff up. You guys are racist. You guys don't, you guys don't know anything. Right? Is that not what the world, they speak ill of us all, all the time. But that doesn't matter because we're not, we're not interested. We could care less. It says we ignore them when they curse us. We stare at them in silence when they treat us shamefully directly to our face because we know better because we have knowledge and understanding. We know better. It says they go about their business and we go about in hunger and thirst looking to our dwelling place, which we perceive through our lifestyle and our conscience. We do not hang on to created things, but we withdraw from them. Our hearts are set on what truly is. And although we are sick, weak, and in pain, there is great strength hidden within us. Even though we're going through our tribulations, we've been going through our sicknesses, our pain and weakness, there is great strength hidden within us. And the other nations know that. They know that even though we might be going through rough times, physically, spiritually, mentally, they know that there is great strength in us. I actually didn't want to take the picture of the notes um, of the book, so I just grabbed this from my notes real fast. The Testament of Solomon, page 983, volume 1. That would be probably the um, Old Testament pseudepigrapha. Whatever things are accomplished in heaven are accomplished in the same way also on earth. So link on the same page, first paragraph. Demons go up to the firmament of heavens and hear the decisions which issue from God concerning the lives of men. So these these. Demons go up there and they hear the proclamations of the Most High. And they come down here and those things happen. They make those things happen. So when the Most High said, the 400 years are up, he makes that proclamation. He makes that proclamation in the heavens. And then the demons down here carry those orders out down here. That's why all of a sudden you start to see society go upside down. The world thinks it's men who are, you know, the evil man, the rich man who are trying to reset. You hear them all the time. They're trying to reset everything so that they can be on top and, you know, and they can make it reset. I'm like, they're already on top. Why do they got to destroy everything when they already own everything? Most High makes the proclamations in the heavens. And the spirits down here carry it out. The Most High tells them, your time is done. Start to destroy the things you've built. Destroy all the things that you've built. That's what the demons are going to do. They follow orders. The Most High made them too. And they're going to follow the orders of the Most High. When the Most High tells them to destroy the things you made, that's what they're going to do. Just like when your kid build something in the room. They've had their time to, you know, maybe get some Legos, a big old blocks, build all this stuff. He said, okay, you guys got about two hours to play with these, with these blocks. But when I come in here and tell you to clean it up, you're going to knock all the blocks down, destroy all the stuff that you built and put it away. That's exactly what's going on right now. Father told him, yeah, you got 400 years. 
400, 500 years. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to do that. But when I tell you it's time to clean up this mess, that's what you're going to do. 2019, most I said, you start cleaning up this mess. It's time for you to start cleaning up this mess. And see, the other people, they can't understand that. The ones who don't have knowledge, they don't understand this because all they can understand is ignorance and bliss and fun. And all of a sudden, when the fun's take, being started to be taken away, they have no idea what's going on. What do you mean we, we, we have to put this, we have to clean up? What do you mean we got to put, we're having fun. What do you mean? Why, why does the party have to stop? Because daddy told you the fun's done. The party's over. That's why. And don't be giving me no back top. Don't be giving me no lip. I'm going to make it even worse for you. So you know, you know what happens when daddy tells you to clean up? And you know you know if he, he ain't playing. So you start cleaning that stuff up. And that's what you're seeing. That's why this church, this abominable church, is so important. And has been so key. And that's why it's so important for us to bring this information out. And how we've been, you know, separated from this church and needing to get its approval. But the rest of the world is still connected to the church and still needs that approval. We read again from 1 Nephi 13, just about the abominable church. Because this abominable church is so important to prophecy. And see, they're not using any of this prophecy. This is why the second stick is so important. Because this abominable church is the ones actually, for the rest of the world, they're the ones that are actually coming up with prophecy. And the prophecy never has to deal with anything about them. This church has been, I mean, look at what it's been responsible for. Hundreds, if not, I'm sure, billions of deaths, rapes, robberies, murder, hidden identity, hidden lands, hidden everything. But that somehow this church has nothing to do with prophecy, right? Nephi sees in vision the church of the devil set up among the Gentiles. The discovery and colonizing of America the loss of many plain and precious parts of the Bible, the resultant state of Gentile apostasy, the restoration of the gospel, the coming forth of Latter-day Scripture, and the building up of Zion. Okay? About 600 to 592 B.C. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look, and I looked and beheld many nations and kingdoms. And the angel said unto me, What beholdest thou? And I said, I behold many nations and kingdoms. And he said unto me, These are the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles. And it came to pass that I saw among the nations of the Gentiles the formation of a great church. And the angel said unto me, Behold, the formation of a church, which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of God, Yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. Now, see, so you got all these Christians talking about how they are the saints. They are the saints. See, the church you guys belong to was the church that destroyed the saints. The Catholic and Christian churches that you belong to today were the ones that were responsible for killing the true saints of the Most High. So how in the hell are you the saints of the scriptures? You can't be in league with the devil and say that you are sons and daughters of the Most High. What did this abominable church do? What were they responsible for again? And the angel said unto me, Behold, the formation of a church, which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of God. Yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. Your churches, with white Jesus, Caesarea, they tortured, slayed, 
bindeth our people down, put yokes of iron on their necks, and took them into captivity. They did that to the saints of the Most High. The ones that made a covenant with the Most High through sacrifice. Those were the ones. That church was also present with the southern kingdom over in Jerusalem when they were destroying the southern kingdom. They did the same thing there. They brought those same tactics over here. This was all part of prophecy because in Jeremiah 50, it talks about how um, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom are going to be enslaved together. going to be going through their punishment together that's what this church has been doing so you can't be part of the church the abominable church and then say you're the saints because you are not and it came to pass that i beheld this great and abominable church and i saw the devil that he was the founder of it remember we said earlier the devil knows that he could not repent cannot get grace from the most high so therefore, he is going to set up an organization or a church that is going to lead people away from the Most High. Yeah, you're going to think you're serving the Most High, but you're serving the devil. So I saw the devil, that he was the founder of it. And I also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twined linen and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots, all these harlots, all these churches have been all about the money. Give my 10%. Give me my money. Give my money. Where's my money? You want a blessing? Where's my money? You want me to pray for you? Where's my money? And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twine linen and the precious clothing and the harlots are the desires of this great an abominable church. All your churches are all about the money. So again, you're not part of the church of, of the Most High and you're not the saints. That's why at the end, the Most High has to raise up his people so that people can see the alternative to the lie. They've been bombarded with the lie the entire time. Now at the end, the Most High raises up his people to show you the truth, to show you the alternative to the lies. And also for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity? Why do they destroy us? So that the world will praise their God. And also for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity? Psalms 83. The whole world praises this abominable church. They are in league with the church. As long as they destroy the saints of God and bring them down in captivity, destroy our people, brought them us into captivity, and the whole world praises this church for it. And now at the end, you think that somehow you are the saints of God. And you think that you're worshiping the true Most High with a church that is responsible for destroying the Most High's chosen people. In what world does that make any sense? So you got a church that hides information, hides who the true people are, hides our records, hides our books, hides our lands, kills, rapes, robs, murders our people, hides all of that, hides what the Most High looks like, hides what his people look like, stolen all of our resources, and then tells you that you're the saints of God and that Jesus is coming back to save you. Save you from what? What do you need to be saved from? What has happened to you that's worse than what's happened to the Most High's chosen people? I'd venture to say 
nothing as bad as what's happened to the Mosai Stoli people. And no one comes to our aid. Because that's the way the Mosai set it up. Only people, the only one's going to come to our aid is our father as he restores the covenant. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld many waters, and they divide the Gentiles from the seed of my brethren. We'll stop on that right there. It's very plain where we are in scripture right now, where we are in prophecy right now. We are at the end. The alternative has been revealed. If you think that your church is so godly, go back through history and show how, make some videos and show how your church, all these great things that your church has done, because you guys love to talk about how, oh, we've gone to Africa and we built some schools. Talk about the history of your churches and explain how that was not part of prophecy. Go through Deuteronomy 28. Look at the curses. You, Your actions of your churches fits those curses on our people to the T. And then take a look at the Book of Mormon. Look at what we just read right now and tell us that it's not how these churches are and what they've done. The bill is due. The bill is due. People who have made their covenants with the devil and his church just know what's coming for you. Double what we got. Double what we got. The Most High is not playing. He's making it plain and very easy to see. He's bringing his truth out. He's showing you the difference between the Most High and his people and the minions of Satan. Satan cannot repent. And he's making a point to make sure that no one else, as few people can repent as possible also. He's hidden all the keys of knowledge. He's showing how ignorance is bliss for him. But the Most High is the opposite. He's, he's given us knowledge and understanding in order for us to come back to the Father. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.